Now, of course, there's a more cumbersome way of, you know, like dealing with rectangle entering coordinates. Um, besides the way I did it, you know, you can click, and then I can hold down the mouse, and so my menu pops up, and you can specify it by area, dimensions, or rotation. So, um, if you choose dimensions, then it's asking for a preset length. Let's, let's say let's make it uh, three by three. Okay, and then you got a you know a square there ready to place. Um, let's try the area command. Let's kind of curious to see what that does. It sounds interesting. Okay, inner area of rectangle. You know, let's say uh, fifteen. <laughs> Okay, um, calculate rectangle dimensions on, based on length or width. Okay, um, let's, it defaults to length, so let's enter 2. Calculate rectangle dimensions. Well, I entered 2, didn't I? I'm going to accept that. Invalid keep. Okay, well, hit enter, I guess. Okay, um, and then you can specify its length, so um, let's make it two. Okay, so anyway, that's super intuitive, but it's useful sometimes. I can see it being useful to be able to do that. That's kind of cool. Um, so, anyway, okay, um, now when you're drawing a rectangle, too, you know, you can also specify rotation, so let's make this like 45 degrees, and then, you know, um, we can go specify, like, the dimensions like four by four, okay, and then we can place it, you know, whatever qu quadrant we want. Um, also, you know, before you click on rectangle, but you're in rectangle <coughs> mode, you know, you got a chamfer option too, and a fillet option, and so forth. So, you know, you can go enter like fillet, for example, and give it like a like five inch okay and then when we start drawing that rectangle notice it's still constrained interestingly enough so um, there you go and to get out of that you know, rotation mode, just click it again. So, I don't know why this keeps doing that. Okay, you know, rotation mode is off now, but if I right click for some reason, it goes back into the previous rotation mode, but then I gotta undo it there. Yeah. Anyway, in these rectangles, you know, now that I've set fillet, you know, we've got, we're stuck with fillet, so, um, you know, until you turn it off. Oops. Well, maybe you can't. Okay, no, I, I guess I did. I don't know what that did. But, um, you know, what this program really needs, and this is what's really lacking, is a context-sensitive menu, you know, uh, like Photo Paint, you know, or Photoshop, or whatever, or Draw have. You know, if it had a context-sensitive menu, you know, like uh, SolidWorks does, you know, then, you know, the menu, there'd be a part of the menu that would change depending on what command you got selected, and then you could do it by the mouse, and... It, even if you wanted to still use the keyboard, you at least know what all the options are, 
it make it a hell of a lot easier to learn. I, I just don't know why they haven't done that. Every other program in the world has pretty much a, like this has a contact sensitive menu in it. Um, you know, Rhino sort of does and sort of doesn't. The context menu is in the command line, <coughs> but you can click on things in the command line, you know, uh, different options, so it's still hands free. Um, by the way, you know, of course, you know, you need to explode these objects if you're going to work on them individually, but here is the explode command, so. <coughs> but. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they have an unexplode command like they do in Rhino. I mean, because I constantly switch back and forth. Because, again, in Rhino, you're only working in polylines, really, even though you think you're working in individual segments sometimes. But it's all nerves. So, you know, everything's a polyline. So, you know, you often do have to, you know, explode things, but then you can recombine them. But I, I don't see, I don't know where the recombine command is if they have such a thing. Um, so... You know, but it's great because I usually like these to be so I can just select them, especially for extrusions or whatever. I mean, it's like, you know, it's the way to work. And, um, you know, I do not like working in these individual line segments. It's, you know, things tend to get out of control, like when you're trying to, you know, move something or whatever. You know, if you don't select everything properly, well, you know, you got a problem. So, um, anyway. If I wanted to trim these objects off. Okay, um. Let's try to do a trim command. It says select objects or, you know, select cutting objects. <coughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> might be a good idea for me to make this more than one line. I kind of shrink it down as a rhino. I shrink it down. It's just useless. Um, okay. So I select that cutting object. Now let's uh, trim that shit off. You know, this doesn't cross it, so, anyway, um, and voila. Now, you know, if you go into trim, um, you know, and you're in the selection mode, you know, if you, I don't know. Okay, um, all right. Um, didn't work there, but, um, let's go ahead and, what the hell? <laughs> and do, okay, let's try this again. Go into trim, select cutting edges, um, like that okay that's the only cutting edge but now you know then I'm selecting objects to trim you know when I right click on the menu you know I can choose the fence or the crossing or the project you know or uh, these other uh, options here um, Um. <sighs> and voila. So that's pretty cool. So that shows you, you know, like if I wanted to move something that says select objects. The problem is that, you know, you don't get it right here, um, so, you know, let's choose copy, for example, you know, um, but I don't have that fence and everything show up as an option here, so I still wouldn't know. I mean, I'd be oblivious to the fact that I could, you know, uh, you know, enter the fence, however the hell you did that, I forgot, I had to go watch the other video. But at any rate, you know, I'd be oblivious to it if I, you know, because it doesn't show up in the right-click menu. Okay, and on the trim command, though, um, you know, if you 
see that it's got this select all down here um, you know if I just press enter everything is selected so everything's treated like a cutting edge so um, you know that's kind of slick so that's uh, you know that's pretty efficient right there I like that so you know everything's selected so that's real that's really quite useful useful okay now this is pretty slick and I was griping about how these are uh, trim and extend are in the same menu but if you go to trim okay and you know and just hit select all for example um, you know of course it works the way you would expect trim to work and of course I can hit undo for that but if you hold down the shift key it actually puts you into extend mode so you know um, it'll extend it you know to the nearest edge but then I hold you know um, I release the shift key and I'm back to trim mode so you know if that's not slick I don't know what is now I don't know how it works with polylines so I'm gonna see how that behaves okay Oops. Select all. Okay. Yeah, it won't it won't work with polylines. Oh, wait a minute. No, I guess it does work with polylines. Hold on. Okay, yeah, I'm in extend mode, so and now I'm in trim mode. So yeah, that's that's pretty slick. Now I just gotta figure out how to group these objects you know to be one polyline <laughs> and then I'm set. You know, but in AutoCAD, traditionally polylines were a different object type than lines, so I don't know that I can actually combine them like I can in Rhino, so I'm not holding my breath. Now, of course, you know, one of the things that I've always loved about AutoCAD that is sorely missing from Rhino is a good stretch command. And AutoCAD's stretch command really is better than, you know, anything, because um, it's really nice to be able to stretch it like that. But in Rhino, it just, there's just no equivalent. you got to go grab points. Uh, and activate points and everything, but it just doesn't quite work as fluid as you'd like. So it's a little cumbersome in Rhino. I mean, you can do it, but it's just a little cumbersome. So, um, by comparison, you know, there's extra steps involved. Let's see, now I can go back to my trim command and hit select all. Um, and, you know, this is when, you know, using fence mode or whatever, you know, could be pretty helpful too. So. Um, anyway, it's really slick though. I mean, you know, some of these features make make AutoCAD more appealing to me. Okay, um, you know, another function you know you have in the trim is, you know, if you go, um, you know, select. Uh, oops. You know, go select, uh, well, I, I guess you got to blow this up. Uh, okay. Now, you know, I can select, uh, like, these two lines. Oops, hold shift. Hit enter. And then, you know, if I go uh, to my edge command, what it'll do is it'll create, you know, but you got to turn it on, though. You know, by pressing E. Okay, and what that does is that will actually project out an imaginary line based on those edges. And, you know, remember if you hold shift, you know, um, it'll extend it. Now, you know, I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that. There are occasions when that might be handy uh, to use. But, you know, if I was going to make this like a big box, I'd normally just use a chamfer command, or, or in this case, the fillet command. Um, you know, because again, I can just hold shift. Um, you know, and get these things to work that way. 
Now, of course, in that edge command, you know, you got to actually turn it off. Um, apparently. Well, you don't if you select all, so. Um, but the guy in the video said, you know, you got to turn that off. But uh, apparently not. And uh, you do have an erase command. You know, if you hit R, you know, you can actually erase things right in the command. Um, So, and then you're back out, so that's pretty neat. But, um, yeah, I don't know, you know, he said that, uh, oops, he said that, uh, you know, in the select all mode, everything's going to an implied boundary, but I don't know what that, uh, yeah, that, that might be the case. I mean, you know, it seems to be constrained by something. Um, so, you know, if you'll hit edge again, you know, because it's still set to extend, so you got to hit no extend to turn it off. So, you know, but like I said, the edge mode. Hmm. Uh, it's weird. Can't seem to get it to turn back on. That's on no extend. Project. Weird. Oh, it's fine. I just forgot. You know, you gotta, ch you know, hit shift. <laughs> Use the extend, but uh, you know, it won't trim it. You know, so um, anyway. <laughs> 